Have you ever wondered what happened after the Big Bang? Well, let's start. First of all, imagine the size of a proton. Protons are so small that a little dib of ink, like the dot on this eye, can hold something in the region of 500,000 thousand thousand of them. Now imagine a billionth of a proton, which you can't, by the way, because of how small it is. That was the original size of everything. It is called the singularity. Now get ready for the Big Bang stand aside in a safe distance. Oh, wait, there isn't. A safe distance because nothing has been created yet. Outside the singularity, there is nothing. When the universe begins to expand, it won't be spreading out to fill a larger emptiness. The only space that exists is the space it creates as it goes. Space and time don't exist outside of the singularity. And so, from nothing our universe begins. In a single blinding pulse, the singularity assumes heavenly dimensions, space beyond conception. In the first second, gravity and other forces that governed our universe are produced. In less than a minute, the universe is a million billion miles across and growing fast. There is a lot of heat now, 10 billion degrees of it, enough to begin the nuclear reactions that create the lighter elements principally hydrogen and helium, with a dash, about one atom in a hundred million, of lithium. When this moment happened is a matter of some debate. Cosmologists have long argued over whether the moment of creation was ten billion years ago or twice that or something in between. The consensus seems to be heading for a figure of about 13.7 billion years. Although everyone calls it the Big Bang, many books caution us not to think of it as an explosion in the conventional sense. It was rather a vast, sudden expansion on a whopping scale. The Big Bang theory isn't about the bang itself, but about what happened after the bang. According to Guth's theory, at one ten millionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second, gravity emerged. After another ludicrously brief interval, it was joined by electromagnetism and the strong and weak nuclear forces. If the universe had been slightly different, if gravity was a bit stronger or weaker, if the expansion happened a tad faster or slower, then stable elements like those found in you, me, and the Earth might never have formed. If gravity was a bit stronger, the universe could have collapsed like a poorly built tent. But if it was weaker, nothing would have come together, leaving the universe as a dull, empty void forever. Martin Rees, the astronomer royal of Britain, suggests the existence of numerous universes, potentially infinite in number, each characterized by unique attributes and combinations. According to Rees, we inhabit a universe where the specific combination of factors allows for our existence. Reese argues that our universe is governed by six specific numbers, and if any of these values were altered even slightly, the universe would not be as we observe it. For instance, the conversion of hydrogen into helium, a fundamental process for the universe as we know it, must occur with precise and deliberate timing. So far, everything appears to be finely tuned. However, in the long term, gravity might prove to be a bit too strong. It could potentially halt the expansion of the universe and trigger a collapse, compressing everything into another singularity. This could potentially kickstart the entire cycle anew. Conversely, if gravity is too weak, the universe might keep expanding indefinitely. In three minutes, 98% of all the matter there is or will ever be has been produced. About three minutes after the Big Bang, the temperature of the universe was still around a billion degrees. At this point, the composition of the universe had settled, with about three-quarters hydrogen and one-quarter helium. This ratio remains largely the same today, although it has changed slightly over time due to the burning of hydrogen and helium by stars, which produced heavier elements. During this early period, the universe was still opaque, primarily composed of photons or particles of light scattering throughout. This state persisted for the next few hundred thousand years. Over time, regions of slightly higher density in the universe began attracting more material from less dense regions. 
gradually introducing slight non-uniformity to the universe. Let's take a trip back in time to around 400,000 years after the Big Bang. At this point, the universe had cooled down to about 3,000 Kelvin, allowing atoms to form without being torn apart by intense radiation. These atoms were created as electrons and protons merged, clearing the way for light to travel freely through space. This marked the moment when the universe became transparent. Now the light in the universe roamed unhindered, eventually becoming what we know today as the Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB for short. Over billions of years, as the universe expanded, the wavelengths of this light stretched out. We observe the CMB at microwave wavelengths, capturing tiny fluctuations that remain from the early universe. These fluctuations, seen as areas of slightly higher and lower temperatures, offer insights into the universe's composition and its initial conditions. Following the release of CMB, the universe was predominantly composed of neutral gas. Within this vast expanse, there existed denser regions exhibiting slightly stronger gravitational forces compared to their less dense counterparts. This gravitational pull led to the accumulation of more matter in these regions, resulting in increased density. While the denser regions experienced a slight rise in temperature, they were not yet hot enough to initiate star format. Apart from these gravitational fluctuations, the universe appeared relatively uneventful, lacking any remarkable occurrences. Neutral hydrogen emitted only faint radio waves, rendering the universe seemingly dull. However, ongoing and future experiments aim to chart the distribution of neutral hydrogen in the early universe, offering further insights into its evolution. After a few hundred million years, much of the universe had cooled to just a few hundred degrees above absolute zero. However, certain regions experienced increasing density and temperature during the Dark Ages. Eventually, these regions became hot enough to ignite hydrogen, birthing the universe's first stars. These inaugural stars, predominantly composed of hydrogen and helium, due to the prevailing elements of the time, briefly burned hydrogen into heavier elements like lithium. Their existence was fleeting compared to stars like our sun. Upon their explosive deaths, known as supernovae, they scattered heavier elements across the cosmos. These explosions, along with the star's luminosity, initiated the ionization of neutral hydrogen, stripping electrons from protons, thus beginning the era of reionization. Within another few hundred million years, the universe was once again largely ionized. Approximately one billion years after the Big Bang, the most densely populated regions of the universe had amassed immense mass. Clusters of thousands and even millions of stars coalesced, giving rise to the earliest galaxies. Over time, these galaxies underwent collisions and mergers, consolidating into larger galactic formations. This gradual evolution culminated in the formation of the vast superclusters of galaxies observed in the cosmos today. Approximately 9 billion years after the Big Bang, our sun emerged from a vast cloud of gas and dust, mostly composed of hydrogen and helium. But it also contained traces of heavier elements generated by preceding generations of stars. As the sun took shape, the residual gas and dust from the initial cloud coalesced into a disk around it. Over hundreds of millions of years, this dusty disk gave rise to planets, shaping the solar system we inhabit today.